Hello everybody, hello everyone, hope you're ready for a good day, hope you're ready for some fun, I certainly am, ho 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 ho, I am gonna play some Magic Arena, and then we got Secret of Mana later, and Isaac in between, it's gonna be really really clean, alright, sorry. I don't know what I'm talking about. But yes, it's going to be an awesome day. Hope you all are having a great day as well. Hope you're ready for some, uh, well, just normal and yet awesome things that we're going to be doing. Uh, I want to start out by giving a huge shout out to all the streamers who are supporting Ukraine. Ukraine is obviously like the Ukrainian people are yeah, having a bad time right now. And the, the world is a chaotic place and they are... Uh, yeah, they're coming together and showing a lot of strength, and I hope that we, the rest of the world, can help them out. Uh, I wish that I were in a position where I could do more to help them or do anything to help them, but uh, I am not. So I do really appreciate the people who are in that type of position, who are making a difference and doing charity streams. I saw um, Alex Botez and the Botez live stream doing uh doing a ukraine support stream last night which was super awesome to see i also saw on twitter that ben feingold and nemo and a few other streamers are potentially talking about doing a collab stream which kind of highlights how freaking amazing the the chess community is the, the chess community in particular really um always shows amazing things about the they're just awesome people uh tons of awesome people and there's a lot of awesome collaboration happening there which i really love to see so i'm uh i'm very just you know i, I love the i love the chess community love to see what they're doing um about this ukraine thing and want to give a shout out to them you guys are freaking awesome thank you <laughs> thank you for you know helping the world become a better place you guys are great uh so without further ado Let's go ahead and uh, make our way into some magic here. So we've got, uh, I don't know where we got those cards from, but we got them from somewhere. For now though, we are going to do a drafto. Let's go ahead and uh, need to turn off this shenaniganery. There we go. All right, let's go. Yes, I'm sure I want to purchase this item. Time for big money, big bomb. Something fun. Let's get something fun. Yeah, fun cards are awesome. Come on, last person, fill the seat. You can do it, I believe. Also, cheers, everybody, cheers. Mm. Try it again. One more person. It is a beautiful sunny day here. Just saying. I think that uh, is a sign that we're going to get a beautiful sunny draft. I hope. Let's go. Scrap Welder. Sacrifice an artifact with mana value X. Return target artifact with mana value less than X from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until end of turn. It's a 3-3 three, three for 3. It's not bad. 
So things I'm thinking about here are this Twisted Embrace, because this thing has some crazy combos with that Geothermal Kami, Kami and like there's a lot you can do with it. Goshen to have Hidden Cruelty seems all right. I do like this Okiba Reckoner Raid a lot too. I think we're gonna start off, we could take a spinning wheel kip. This does a lot with like the death touch creatures. Um, but I, I haven't played with this card yet. So that makes me, I also haven't played with this, but I don't really like the artifact stuff that much. We're gonna, we're, we're gonna start off with a twist embrace. We may not even end up playing it. You know, it may just be a nothing burger, but I, I wanna try, see if we can get some sort of synergy with it going. Here, I really like Fall of Lord Conda. I also like Flame Discharge. I also like the Rabbit Battery. Mm. These commons are not anything very exciting. We're gonna take Fall of Lord Conda. I think White Black is pretty, pretty decent. I, I think all the color combinations in this format are good. Uh, so Long Reach of Night, not as good now that it, uh, Now that it's fixed, I think it is still pretty good though. Virus Beetle. I really love this card. We could take another Twisted Embrace. Mm, I think it's between these three. I think Twisted Embrace is probably, I think Virus Beetle is probably objectively the strongest, like just on its face. There's a lot you can do with it. Long Reach of Night does seem pretty good as well. I'm gonna take the Virus Beetle. I just really like this card. <laughs> More than anything else, that's my uh, my selling point on that card right now. It's just, I like it. So, Containment Construct, whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard if you do play this card. I've heard lots of good things about this card from, uh, like, Sam Black was talking it up, LSV and Marshall were talking it up. Makes me want to try it. Makes me want to try it out. You need some discard synergy, and I guess Channel is discard synergy. Other options here are like Era of Enlightenment, which I also think is very, very good. But we're not certainly in white quite yet. I'm gonna take this, this containment construct. We'll see if we can, we'll see what we can make out of it. I don't really, I haven't really given much thought to how to make it good. So I'm interested to try that out. <laughs> Just see if we can make it good. Uh, Era of Enlightenment seems fantastic. Everything else here seems not. <laughs> so we'll take an Era of Enlightenment here. I do like a Mirror Shell Crab, but not that much. Imperial Oath. Sam Black really likes that card. I guess it's probably pretty dang good. This game, this format is pretty slow. It still seems like it gets slept on pretty hard though. I think you can pick them up fairly late. All right, so here we could take a Terrarium for some splash potential. You could just take a Sunblade Samurai Combos with our containment construct, kind of. It's weird. Because this is so expensive. We'd have to spend seven to discard it and cast it. We're, we're not really doing that, except for in the late, late game. But these games do go pretty long. I also just like the Terrarium. Because uh, we, we're looking like... It's looking like black is pretty cut. So we may not end up in black, we may end up wanting to try to splash black. If anything. And that, uh, is difficult when we have a double black card here. 
So, so far our deck is looking pretty bleh. But let's try and make this containment construct into a thing. None of these seem like anything we want. <laughs> okay. Could take a Thunderseal Colossus. Could just take this Kami of Restless Shadows. There's not really anything worth pivoting into a different color for. We're gonna take the Thundersteel Colossus. It's just colorless, so we probably get an opportunity to play it. Okay, so now, I like this Nazumi Prowler. There's a lot of black stuff in this pack, which makes me think maybe black isn't getting cut as hard as I was thinking, and it just was relatively light in those other packs. None of these black cards are the most powerful. I like Nazumi Prowler quite a bit though. Wow. Spinning wheel kick and master's rebuke coming around. Interesting. Unfortunately, there's also like these good white and black cards. I think we're just gonna take a moth rider patrol here. I, I, I think this is a sign that green is probably open and I do kind of want to pivot to take advantage of that. But there's also just good cards in our colors and we don't know anything about that about the the green state very well like here we wouldn't have gotten anything for it uh wow rabbit battery either this is getting slept on or people just don't like red and i think people might just not like red <laughs> yo what up slurms you still haven't been able to get into this set Oh man, really? You mean like you haven't had a chance to play it or you're not enjoying it? Because I am just completely loving this format. This is probably among my favorite sets of all the, maybe my favorite limited set that I've ever played. I've only played like, you know, a do half a dozen drafts or something, but there's it just has everything that I want in a set. I guess we'll just take a land here. Light the way. Bounced off it after about five drafts. Really? What what was your uh or what what's your kind of complaint about it or what is it that you don't find yourself enjoying about it? To me, it feels like the games just have a ton of decisions. There's lots of interesting inflection points. And there's just a lot of like, well, I could go on for quite a while about all the things I like about this format. Uh, but I haven't found any big complaints about it uh, for myself anyway. Mm, so here, long reach of night seems Fine. The biggest thing for me, I guess, as far as complaints go, is it's very difficult to draft a deck. Like trying to figure out how to make your deck synergize is hard. I'm actually gonna take this Fire Speedle. I'm not gonna take Long Reach Knight. I like Long Reach Knight a lot, but I really like Fire Speedle. <laughs> I like Fire Speedle a ton. Kyodai is good, and it's nice to get past it. There's also not really anything else in this pack we would want. This card is absurd. This card is absurd. <laughs> it's so good for an uncommon. I, every time I play against this card, I'm like, holy crap. Um, I, I kind of wish we were in green at this point for just this card, but uh, I do like Kyodai as well. Kyodai is very strong. 
macro synergies. Hmm. Whenever an aura enters the battlefield under your control, if you cast it, you may search your library for an aura card with mana value less than or equal to that aura card and with a different name than each aura you control. Put that card onto the battlefield attached to light pause. That doesn't seem great. So here I think it's either Lord of Four, uh, Fall of Lord Conda or a Spirited Companion. I'm going to take the Spirited Companion. We've already got one Fall of Lord Conda. It is a really good card. Uh, but I, I think Spirited Companion is fantastic. Light Paws is a busted constructed card. I can imagine that. Yeah, I can see that being completely insane in constructed. <laughs> uh banishing slash yeah we'll take a banishing slash i think this card is really good it just destroys artifacts enchantments or creatures hmm so tales of master seshiro this is good and could potentially be splashed we could just take this Scoured Barons for a little bit of in our colors mana fixing. We could also Reckoner's Bargain to sacrifice our Virus Beetle. Just give us like, I don't know why we'd want to sacrifice our Virus Beetle. I mean, to draw two is fine. I'm just going to take this. I think Reckoner's Bargain is pretty good there, though. What was that? Oh, Containment Construct. We haven't found much to make Containment Construct yet. I think I'm going to take an Imperial Oath here. Ooh, or a Sky Blessed Samurai. What do we have for enchantments so far? Just one, two, three, four, five... Mm, I, I still think we can pick up Imperial Oaths pretty freely. So we're going to take the Sky Bliss Samurai. Ooh, build a Bane Slayer. Uh, we don't have much to build it with, but uh, it's an enchantment creature. And I think Goldtail Disciple just like the gaining two life and maybe trading off with something has been pretty relevant in a lot of games. So what exactly do you mean by macro synergies? I'm not 100% sure what those would be. My, I guess micro synergies would be like two cards that work together or a couple of cards that work together here and there. And macro synergies would be like your whole deck synergizing together. Is that is that what you're referring to? I do feel like this format does reward your whole deck synergizing together a lot. Uh, I guess we'll take a long reach of night finally. Macro would be like, I drafted ninjas versus micro as a card working with another card. Okay, I can see that. Uh, I guess the, the way I see it is, oh, I guess I should move my camera somewhere else, huh? The way I see it is this set macro synergies. It's not like I drafted ninjas. It's like I drafted a cohesive deck that had a bunch of stuff that worked together. Uh, so I guess you're right. It's more like a bunch of micro synergies rather than one kind of overarching macro synergy. And I think I really like that. I think I really like that. Um, the many micro synergies basically forming a macro synergy uh, style of this format. Uh, I, I don't think we want another Moth Rider Patrol. I think we'll just take a Bloodfell Caves in case we want to try to splash red. Have you considered that maybe you're wrong and you should hate it? Hmm, I have considered that. It's possible. 
I've been wrong before. I've been wrong before. But I'm entitled to my own opinion, okay? Jeez. How dare you come in here and tell me to hate it. Just like you're entitled to your opinion. <laughs> uh, I think Kami of Terrible Secrets is sweet here. I do like Era of Enlightenment as well. There's not really much here for us. Searchlight Companion could be pretty good. Going to finish out a draft and give it another go with what you know about the set. Well, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you're able to find some fun in it. Um, like I said, everybody has their own preferences. So you're perfectly within your right. Uh, you know, you're perfectly within reasonable human actions to not like a set that I like. Um, I'm just t calling out some of the things that I like about it and that I enjoy. In case, you know, in case you're interested, uh, that's about it. But I hope that uh, I hope that you do enjoy it. I hope you had fun with your uh, your draft here. I don't know what I'm gonna take here. I, I, I'm gonna take this Takuchi Shadow Walker purely because I want some ninjutsu to bring my Spirited Campaign and Virus Beetle back potentially. Oh wow! A Behold the Unspeakable. Can we splash this somehow? <laughs> Can we get this in here? I guess probably not. Blue is uh, blue is looking delicious. Prepare to be. How did your uh, how did your flight go anyway? Did you end up doing all right? Yes, I would prefer to be playing in day two of the of the Storybook Brawl tournament as well. Ooh, Naomi Pillar of Light. We've got some decent artifacts and enchantments. Maybe she can be good for us. Actually, if we get to attack with her, she seems like she'll probably be good for us. Hmm. I'm just going to take debt to the Kami. We don't have much removal, actually. 33 points. Hey, you and me both. We're, we are at the same points. That is neat. Nice, though. Congrats. That, that's a pretty... I feel like that's a pretty decent finish. Uh, it, it's tough to get 40 points. 40 is a lot of points. Given only six rounds and the point distribution. Take a kunai. Hmm. Ooh, what do we take here? This is actually an interesting decision. We don't have much time for it. We can take either an Imperial Oath, another Twisted Embrace. I'm going to take the Imperial Oath. I just want to try this card a little bit. Ah, now I regret that decision. We'll take a Befriending the Moths here. Jump some creatures. Dang. Green is just wide open right now. I'm just going to take this Blossom Prancer just for uh, vault purposes. Wow, what is a Moonsnare Specialist doing here? What is going on? Taking that just because. Just on principle. Dang. Blue in this pack was uh was something else. Ooh, Era of Enlightenment came back around. Hmm. All right, so we're gonna have to adjust our deck quite a bit. Uh, we've got like, we've got some weird cards that we drafted early that don't have any synergies. And we need to fix those up, 
fix those up. For instance, we've got that... Uh, We've got this containment construct, which we don't really have much in the way of synergies for. So I think we can... I think we can get rid of that. I don't know if we need two Moth Rider patrols. I also don't know if we need a Thundersteel Colossus. We've got a lot of top end here. We're also playing a relatively small game with all these virus beetles. Long Reach of Night is interesting as well. I don't know if we want this Ninja's Kunai. I think it's a little too slow. Our deck is pretty slow though. <laughs> That's what makes me think that it's too slow. We've also got this Fall of Lord Conda. We do have some pretty good removal, just not a ton of it. Don't think we need this blade blesser. I mean, we don't, we obviously don't need that either. <laughs> We don't need the uh, the red splash land that we took. Long reach of night is definitely worse now. I think we'll cut a kunai. Hmm. Yeah, we'll cut that Thundersteel Colossus. We'll try it like this. It's actually... This looks like a deck that one would draft when they are inexperienced in drafting, drafting a color combination in this format. Uh, I feel like this is kind of my first attempt at a black-white deck, and I can see some glaring holes in the deck, but I can also see it getting a couple of wins. This is not really the type of hand that I want, um, but it's three lands of four spells, so I'm not mulling it ever. <laughs> We got a Naomi. That's pretty cool. Man, this is looking pretty dangerous over there. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh... so I started streaming, I, I bumped my stream up to uh, 720p from like, it, it defaulted to 612p or something like that. 
Uh, definitely, I'm pushing the limits of what my computer can do right now. <laughs> so I got to put uh, Streamlabs OBS into performance mode. Man, this road captain. We're, we're just doing nothing for like so many turns. Do we want to debt to the Kami now? I think it only costs three, so we can't exile it. Debt to the Kami later. I guess that we'll do this on creature. We could have just taken a bunch of damage and held on to this. That may have been the smartest play. But we have removal for like big things here with Fall of Lord Conda. So, getting some value out of this while we just we get an opportunity to spend our mana. And they get to put some sort of artifact onto the battlefield if they have such a thing. Oh, interesting. Oh, gosh. Oh, it's this thing. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh no, what have we done? What have we done? What have we done? This thing is insane. Fortunately, they don't have five mana to use it anytime soon. And it has to be four other artifact creatures and or vehicles you control. So they only have one right now. What are we doing here? Call me a terrible secrets for no value. Nazumi Night Prowler for no value. I guess we can go Nazumi. Uh, I guess we're just going to play. Kami? <laughs> Go, little Kami. Defend us while we try and uh, play some of our super expensive spells we got here. The other thing I was thinking about was playing the Zoomy Night Prowler and just cycling this for a land. They've got some sort of ninjutsu. Oh man. At least they can't bring in an ogre ninja. That's a thing, right? Oh. They can bring that in though. Are you gonna discard your bat to kill my Kami? Well, that's rude. Ugh. And it doesn't even cost four, so I can follow Lord Conda it. I guess we want to go. We've just got to get our board going, I think. So just take a take a planes 
play a Moth Rider Patrol and a Nazumi Prowler. Just get stuff out of our hand. That's <laughs> that's what we like to call setting value on fire. So what are we gonna do here if they attack? Let's say they attack with everything. I guess we trade. Okay, that's worse. Take six or double block covert technician. So this is an artifact, which means we kind of want to hold on to it. I don't think we win this game if we double block that covert technician. I just don't think that's a thing that happens. So we'll Imperial Oath. We could play Naomi. She blocks stuff. Oh, that's interesting. Virus Beetle, Virus Beetle, Swamp. <laughs> they do have these cards that are sitting in their hand. I... We can do something like Virus Beetle tap down their flyer. We're going to put them all on the bottom. Man, that's a tough decision though. <laughs> uh, double Virus Beetle against an opponent who's stuck on mana and has spells stuck in their hand. Uh, uh, the thing is, yeah, they could just find a land like that and all of a sudden play their hand out or start playing their hand out. We would still get one value, piece of value out of it for sure. So we're going to Double block this and take four. Yeah. Maybe we double block both of these. If now they could have ninjutsu ninja. <laughs> That's kind of what I'm afraid of here. Or ninjutsu ogre, I should say. Not ninjutsu ninja. <laughs> ninjutsu ogre. Okay. That's not terrible. Play a four mana creature.
Tamiyo's completion on my Moth Rider Patrol? Does that mean they have another Tamiyo's completion in hand? Make them discard something? The guaranteed discard seems really good, but the opportunity to next turn, if they play like some giant creature, go Virus Beetle plus Fall of Lord Conda. Huh. What could they have in their hand? <laughs> Just a... Okay, a Twisted Embrace. That does make sense. Is there some sort of board wipe that I'm playing into? I think the only board wipe requires double white. They need black. Do we get to just kill them? Ha-ha! Yes, yes, yes. White, black deck. Doing good things. All right. <laughs> We, uh, we started that game off pretty slow, and then apparently they just, like, got stuck on nothing. We won. Feels good, man. All right. Let's try and uh, take down one more. This is a deck that I'd be happy with three wins, ecstatic with four wins, and just mind-blown with anything better than four wins. If we only get two wins, I'd be a little bit disappointed. So this, I think, is a better hand. We could potentially kind of run into some issues. If we either don't hit lands or, um, well, I was going to say if we don't hit lands or we draw only super weak spells, but now we've got this. Maybe this Skyblast Samurai isn't the greatest in this deck. We've got some stuff to make it good. Hmm. I kind of just want to make them exile this, but them gaining two life isn't very scary either. This debt to the com debt to the commie, I think, is pretty bad. <laughs> We're gonna just sit back. We're gonna cycle this for a land at the end of their turn, and then next turn they have creatures on board, so we're guaranteed to get long reach and night value. I guess we'll trade. Their Moth Rider Patrol looks better than ours.
This isn't very scary. So I'm, I could debt to the Kami killing it. Like maybe that's what we want to do. And then if we draw land, we can still long reach of night. We just have to naturally draw the land. No, I'm going to go for the more sure thing play here and just get, get our guaranteed land drop. Long reach of night next turn. And they still have a creature, so we get the value out of it. Oh, we long reach of night would have been much worse anyway if we killed their Akironin because they wouldn't have had a thing to discard. Or they wouldn't have a creature to sacrifice. <laughs> And this being against white red, this being an 04 that just stands around and blocks and gets value from stuff in their graveyard. Okay, so they just sacrifice a creature anyway. They don't want to discard anything in their hand. Bronze plate four. Are they gonna sacrifice something again? No, this time they discard Explosive Entry. We're just gonna play Naomi here. Yeah. That boar on the Hand of Enlightenment is <laughs> pretty nuts. Now, I'm curious, is this thing still... Okay, well, it doesn't matter anymore. I was wondering if this thing is still a creature, if it's reconfigured and put on something else. Now we could go for a tricky play and attack with Naomi and hope that they block with Hand of Enlightenment plus something else. But if they block with like Searchlight Companion plus Bronze Plate Boar, then we're just really sad. So never mind that. We'll uh we'll just play a Sky Blow Samurai. <laughs> My thought was if they block with exactly Hand of Enlightenment plus something else, that we could exile it, but they're they're very unlikely to to do that so <laughs> fancy play averted we're just going to take the damage here they've got some sort of trick Ooh, so we can play Imperial Oath. I think I'd rather actually, for right now, play out our Golden Tail Disciple. And what I want to do is get them to attack with their Hand of Enlightenment, block it, get whatever trick they're they've got get them to cast that and then we can debt to the kami exiling the hand of enlightenment because it's their only enchantment right now all right so they don't attack play a virus beetle that does Make it so we can't use our debt to the Kami. All right, Naomi down. And they discard an Imperial Oath. Uh, so I guess we start attacking now. They didn't have a trick, which is interesting. I, oh, I guess what they were planning on doing is if I blocked with Naomi, they could explosive thingy. Oof. So 
We're gonna go no blocks. We'll take the five. Now we can go. Gain two back. The scry two on this is really good right now. Ooh. I think we want this befriending the moths. Is that good for us right now? It's gotta be, right? Pretty good. We've got one of our own. Do we want to use it right away? Or do we want to get our, I think we do. I think we use our, I think we attack first. Then we use our Imperial Oath to kind of even the board state. And Imperial Oath, the scry is gonna be important here too. So we can go bottom, top, top. And we can destroy their bronze plate bore. With that, oh wow, that is a huge bronze play bore. So we'll just take 10. Ow. They have one, two, three, four, they have six blockers. Yeah, we can't kill them here. So we'll attack. And Spirited Companion to draw our Banishing Slash. Banishing Slash, killing the Bronze Plate Four. And then we also get a Ninja out of it. And we get our second win, huzzah! All right, mission successful. We made it. Okay, let's see if we can uh, get our third win here. <laughs> see if we can get our third win. And those first two games, Went pretty well. Pietra Donna. Another solid hand. All we need now is to draw turn two, virus beetle, turn three, land. Come on. Show me the money, deck. Turn two virus beetle. We have three virus beetles in our deck. There's a chance. Well, boo. What? Oh, we got, we got 50% of the way there, you guys. <laughs> turn two virus beetle, turn three land. Now. We hope our opponent doesn't kill our virus beetle. Ooh, that's pretty scary. Ooh, turn three land, hey. We got everything we wanted. 
So now we could go turn four Kami of Terrible Secrets and draw a card? Please? Don't kill either of my thingies, opponent. And if they do kill one of them, we can always befriend the moths and get another enchantment because they'd probably kill our Golden Dale Disciple if they're going to kill something, right? Nice. Play Akami, draw a card. I didn't I didn't want to attack before um, they had a chance to block. Because I wanted to make sure we drew a card off of that. I think it, is this when it leaves the battlefield, huh? Ooh, so they can ninjutsu in the covert technician and then play this back out for free. That's pretty fancy. I like it. All right, let's just draw basically anything. A card. That's a card. I think that we're all right with just kind of turning this into a race. Go ahead and make that flying. Next turn, we'll probably make our virus beetle flying again. If they leave their covert technician back, maybe we make the golden tail disciple flying or the Kami of Terrible Secrets flying. Getting to scry theory is gonna be, wow, they discarded a enthusiastic mechanot. Ooh, zero cost kunai is pretty good. They can kill our golden tail disciple, Sag. Really? They put the kunai on their covert technician, huh? And we're just gonna attack first. And Imperial Oath, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> we have and we get to, oh, please don't have a crab. Please do not crab me. If you crab me, I will lose my freaking mind. Okay, they crabbed me essentially. Well, that's sad. That's sad. So now, now we're actually in a pretty bad spot. Not a terrible spot. But we need to draw well from here. Disruption protocol. So fall of Lord Conda. It doesn't really do anything right now, but it does give us some Backup in case they draw something really good. Mobilizer mech, huh? Interesting. Can't do much of that right now either, can we? If 
I don't want to just play it out as a 3-1 because it doesn't really do anything as a 3-1. I think we want to hang on to it as a potential to bring like our Kami of Terrible Secrets back to our hand. Play whatever they have in their hand or lose it it's a disruption protocol that's a nice card to, <laughs> that's a nice card to make them discard don't really have any attacks still man that disruption protocol on our Imperial Oath. That was a, that was a blowout. Another virus beetle. Sure. Are you gonna disruption protocol my uh, my virus beetle? Or what you got over there? <laughs> a, a land. All right. Getting just stuff out of their hand is actually fine because they can just draw and discard every turn right now. Ooh, Air of Enlightenment's a great pickup here. Scry 2. Hmm. So Debt to the Kami gets rid of their Vector Glider. I'm not sure if that's worth a card. I think it is though. If we could be guaranteed to get a creature through, we can do some pretty sweet stuff with this Nizumi Prowler. We just need to have more creatures on board than they have. Ooh, they topped something. That's not good. That's not good at all. Oh, hey. Okay, so the upsetting thing about this is We have to exile the moth. We don't get to get it back. So they have four blockers. Yeah, we can't attack with everything. We're gonna play out our Sky Bliss Samurai.
please play another four mana creature. Hey! Oh, but that's a vehicle. Darn it. Wow. Yikes. That was brutal. Okay. That did not work out as I had hoped. <laughs> um. Hmm. Well, I'm going to do a bit of a desperate play here. So we go Nazumi Prowler, returning Virus Beetle. Give you Death Touch and Life Link. Fall of Lord Conda. Wait, hold on. Do we die to the crackback if we don't play this virus beetle out? I guess we do want to play the, well. Ugh. Holding it for value seems dangerous, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Play Fall of Lord Conda, exiling their Surge Hacker mech. Next turn, we get our Moth back. But I guess our moth will still be tapped, which is rough. We don't get to untap the moth. They know we have a virus beetle in hand, so they probably kept a card they can play. Maybe not.
So I guess if I had realized that the that they could just sacrifice the papercraft decoy, <laughs> it was better to play the beetle out. Hmm. Although getting this on the battlefield and then next turn they're gonna have to sack something again or discard a card and we can beetle them. Oh, that's bad news though. Yikes. They know we have a virus beetle in hand, so they're obviously gonna discard a card, right? Oh. Ah. So they're not gonna discard a card. They're going to win the game because we can't kill them. That's what they're going to do. Well played. Well played, opponent. Oof, too bad we didn't draw this or this. I guess I could have held that card. Uh, that's what I should have held the virus. No, well, they knew the virus beetle was what it was. So never mind. Good game. Man, that was an intense one. That game started off really good for us, and then it turned around with that counter spell of theirs. Ooh. We almost won that in the end, though. If we had found a way to just survive one more turn, I think. Just one more turn. <laughs> and we could have uh, turned the corner, taken it down. Still, that was a fun game. That, that was a reason why I like this format a lot. It's just like so many little decisions here and there. Lots and lots of small but meaningful decisions. One thing I will say is this is one of the most mentally taxing magic formats I've ever played as well. Not only is it super fun, but it is it is taxing to play. Okay. Go Air of Enlightenment here. Don't want either of those, so we basically just drew a card. That's nice. <laughs> Through two cards, kind of. And then we get another one. Uh, do we want to play out an Izumi Prowler? Maybe we actually do. I think I like playing out the, the Prowler here. Next turn, it we have multiple options if they play something that this can kill we can flash in Kyodai and make it indestructible otherwise we can flash in a we can ninjutsu in a shadow walker we'll 
Well, that is neither of those things. Just a bit of a bummer. We could just attack for value. <laughs> But no, I'm going to hold back. See what they do. Can we flash this in after ordering blockers? Do we want to flash this in now? I'm not actually sure that we do. They're holding up something. They've got four mana to spend. And it doesn't let us resolve anything, really. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Hum. Hmm. So what's the plan against Wandering Emperor? How do we take that out? She's a beating, but we have potential ways. They don't play a samurai here. Okay, so they do make a samurai. And another creature. The and another creature part makes this very difficult, doesn't it? Hmm. I think we go Imperial Oath. Debt to the Kami. We can make them exile an enchantment and it gets their Golden Tail Disciple. We can't cast it with Kyodai though. I think we're looking for something better or that we can cast simultaneously with, with Kyodai. Now the plan here is going to be attack Wandering Emperor with everything. We, we lose a lot, <laughs> but this thing is a value engine for sure. We've got the edge in this fight. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. Man. This thing is hard to deal with. Flashing it in the end of your opponent's turn and just making a 2-2. Getting a blocker in the way. We lose a ton if we do alpha at it. That said, they make a 2-2 two -two every turn if we don't. Okay, so now we can't even alpha edit really oh but this says destroy target creature or planeswalker Um, I want to put this on this golden tail disciple, but this might get us blown out. It also just gets us extra value. Our swords will okay, again. that worked. That's good. So now we're fine ish. We're still a little bit behind. That was a really, really, really good draw, though. <laughs> very, very timely draw of that Twisted Embrace. Another turn or two, and this Wandering Emperor would have given them too much value for us to come back from. So what's our next step? How do we break this stalemate? We've got our 4-4 four, four flyer. That's probably really good here. Skybless Samurai. Naomi Pillar of Order would be insane right now. Interesting. Is there any reason not to just block with this Hand of Enlightenment? So I'm okay with either trading one of these for this or eating it and if they kill our hand of enlightenment i'm not sure what they could have that would blow this whole thing out <laughs> all right yeah so that's fine that's fine too i guess Ooh, hey, it's Naomi, Pillar of Order. Perfect. Just on time, just in time. <laughs> now if they don't kill her immediately, we can Kyodai her. And then we get value every turn. Aw. Intercessor's arrest, huh? Naomi, I'm sorry. You got arrested. It sucks. Dang. Hmm. The 
This thing's gonna hit us for six again, and there's not really anything we can do about that. I think we just play our Sunblade Samurai out. Chico's Reign of Truth is pretty nuts, especially when you have multiple arrests as your removal. This deck is looking very strong. I don't know about the suit up, but that actually, it draws a card, so it's not that bad. Okay. Guess we'll just play a Moth Rider Patrol and pass the turn. Hope they... We need them to use their Kunai so that we can play Kyodai. <laughs> oh man. Are they gonna use their Kunai on something? Really? Well... I guess we'll... Kyodai on it. Do they have a way to get that back? Is that why they're just using it? I expect they have some way to get back. It does suck to put our indestructible from Kyodai on a Moth Rider patrol, but this thing blocks. It can block stuff every turn. Michiko is large. I guess this this is probably or this is by far the worst creature we could have put the indestructible on because it could be a tapper as well. But it, it's better than losing it, I think. I think it's better than uh, putting the indestructible on something else and losing the moth rider patrol. Also, we can. Oh, that's a thing. We can attack with Kyodai, <laughs> bounce it back with Takuchi Shadow Walker, and then make something else indestructible. But that leaves us vulnerable for a turn, like very vulnerable for a turn. What's our opponent doing over there? What you doing over there, little opponent? Not much. Maybe that's too dangerous. I 
Let's leave it super exposed. We're just gonna play this out. Man, that is some really cool artwork. Kyodai, soul of Kamigawa. You are a freaking sweet looking creature. find out what they're thinking about make them stop thinking Looks like they're thinking about killing our Kyodai. I don't like that. Stop thinking about killing our Kyodai. There we go. It's another large creature. I really don't like that Sunblade Samurai. What about a Sky Blessed Samurai? What are your thoughts on that? So are they planning a big turn here? They are planning a big turn here. What sort of a big turn do you have in mind there? So if we triple block it and they have another Wanderer's Intervention, that's pretty bad for us. If we just chump block it though, that's not that much better. So we're probably getting blown out by a Wanderer's Intervention here. I can't see any other reason for this attack other than that they have exactly Wanderer's Intervention. Or that they want to trade. I think we're pretty happy with that. Hmm. We get him with the Sky Bless Samurai. I think we still leave Kyodai back. 
Maybe they have a way to get Machiko's Reign of Truth back from their graveyard? Ooh, that would be bad. That would be a nightmare, <laughs> actually. Hmm. All right over there, little pups. You all right? Good boy. Hey, pups, come here. Dex, come here. He was all warm and curled up in his nice little bed. He was having a little inverted sneezing uh, fiasco there. Fall of Lord Conda is a bit awkward here, isn't it? to attack with Kyodai? Huh. I guess not. I should probably, if I weren't uh, saying hi to Jax, I probably should have tapped down their Moth Rider patrol at the end of their turn so they couldn't tap down my Skybliss Samurai. There you go, Flapsy. Good boy. All right. That is a Mnemonic Sphere. Those are a lot of cards. <laughs> they have many, many cards. Tap down there, Moth Rider Patrol. <gasps> woof, woof. Come on. Planes is not what we want. <laughs> So we know that there are two swamps at the bottom of our deck, I'm pretty sure. Wow, we know there are four swamps on the bottom of our deck. So we have, how many swamp, or how many lands do we have? We have eight lands left, and four of them are at the bottom of our deck. So we've only got four lands in 14 cards, or four lands in 13 cards. How many cards do they have left? 15 in their library, 18 in ours. Wow, so they haven't actually drawn that many more cards than us. This is another just long, grindy game with lots of decisions. And I missed four damage with the Skybliss Samurai. So let's see if that ends up being a game changer for us. Tap down Kyodai, sure. Could you please play something large?
They have something with ninjutsu that they want to get in, I guess. So we're going to get hit by something here. I hope it doesn't kill us. And that's annoying because it still only has a uh, converted mana cost of three. We can't follow Lord Condit. Can kill them, I think. Now, ah, we can't kill them because they get to tap a thing. Still, though. We get to hit them for four. They have three, four, five, six, seven, eight creatures. We have one, two, three, four blockers. Yikes. Maybe we can't actually block everything, huh? Yeah, now we just die, I think. Forgot that that taps something when it comes into play. That was a big blunder. I think we were just dead anyway, though. Or I think, yeah, I think that they were just gonna kill us regardless. Wait, no, they have one less attacker than I'm thinking, but they they get to use their one power guy. Yeah. think there's any way to survive this. Block there. Block there. There. Block there. No, we just die. And we would have just died even if we held back our Sky Bliss Samurai. Ah, GG. GG opponent. That was a close one. <laughs> that was a close game. Uh, I don't remember any big decisions that went wrong, but with no replays again. It, it's really hard to improve at magic without replays because you, it's hard to go back and see where you're mistakes were without that so 
I'm I'm happy with how we played that game. I don't really have a problem with it. But that was a that was a really really intense ending for sure. This hand seems all right. I think our ooh double moth rider patrol. Double moth rider patrol. I think maybe. I mean, we don't have it in our hand. I mean, I just mean in our deck. I think it's pretty good in our deck, but I'm not sure. I think it may be a bad deck building decision. Overall, this thing, this arm guard familiar, this has been much better than I anticipated still. I still really like this card a lot. I've been seeing it played. Ooh, they have two of them, huh? And we got a spell out of their hand with our fire speedle, which is sweet. I don't expect them to trade Arm Guard Familiar for Virus Beetle. If they do, I'm okay with that. Next turn, if they don't have a play that blocks Virus Beetle, we get to Ninjutsu Virus Beetle back with our Dakuchi Shadow Walker and get like the most insane of blowouts. Yeah, that, that's a Dirtle card. It's exactly what we want them to be doing. <laughs> we could actually exile it with uh, Banishing Slash, but I don't think we want to. Unless they play something. Huh. That's a big hit. <laughs> that is a big hit if I've ever seen one. What can I say? Next turn we get to Virus Beetle plus Era of Enlightenment or potentially Banishing Slash if they play something that we want to kill with it. So I'm guessing they didn't draw a swamp and they don't know what to discard now. Or they did draw a swamp and they don't know what to discard now. Almost just want to play Sunblade Samurai here for the potential to kill them next turn. Uh, but I do think just getting one of these, they, they didn't want to discard. Ah. Okay. That's actually not that bad for us. Question is, I think we go Era of Enlightenment here. Get our scry. So debt to the kami. We'll keep debt to the kami. That lets us next turn. We can get, we can kill vector glider and moonfolk puzzle maker if they don't play another enchantment. Instead, yes, target for puzzle maker or two resolve auto pay. Hmm. 
Now next turn, if they don't play another enchantment, we can debt to the Kami and then they just can't block our Moth Rider patrol. GG. All right, mission successful. We got our three wins. Urgh. Feels good, man. <laughs> Feels good, man. Got the three wins. Whew. That was a that was a good game. Go us. Let's see if we can get um see if we can get one more. That'd be nice. Get basically our buy-in back. Let's go. Let's go. Go team. Jashushu. Jashushu. Hmm. We're going to keep this. This is by far the worst hand we've had in this, uh, in this draft. And it could get us into trouble. We need to draw a swamp next turn to have a good curve out. But if we draw a swamp soon, we're all right. Okay, drawing a land at all is actually pretty good too. At least we get our turn three golden tail disciple. I'll take that. Especially against this deck that's just obviously trying to beat us down mercilessly. Wow. That's crazy. All right. That is actually nuts. Create a 2 2 red goblin shaman creature token with whenever this creature attacks, create a treasure token. Man. And then the reflection of Kiki Jiki. Wow. Wow. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. We're just going to die super quickly here. And there's not really any way around that. <laughs> we are just going to die. We got to make our land indestructible though. What up? Try to stone rain me now, bro. Oh, I've got many other lands that you could stone rain. Oh, darn. That's too bad. Well, next turn we do get to Imperial Oath. They have to use their kunai on our Kyodai. So then they can stone rain our swamp again. Sad. The saddest of times. We're not quite dead.
Okay. Imperial Oath. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, that says at the beginning of the next end step. Oh. 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 Yikes. Not that I... <laughs> Not that I thought that we were coming back in this game, but yikes, nonetheless. Whoa. Look at that little frogo with a hat on. Nice. That's awesome. Now they get that back in their hand. That's pretty cool. Okie dokie, little spirited companion. Drawing a Nizumi Prowler. Play Nizumi Prowler, just giving this guy a lifelink. And they can go Ronin plus copy it with reflection of Kiki Jiki. <laughs> ah, ah, this card is so good. <laughs> it, it's good in a very fair sort of way, though. It's good in just like they're slowly value grinding me out. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. The value is so real. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Why is this happening to me? Ah, uh, I couldn't take it anymore. I couldn't take that life anymore. That was pretty that was a pretty sweet little deck they had going on there. That was nice. Well, hey. GG's. G G G G G G G G G we got our we got our three wins. That's kind of our standard goal, getting the little bit back. And hey, that was a fun draft. That was a fun little uh, white black deck that did not turn out to be that great. Dang, we didn't get our thirty black or green spells in. We'll have to get that next time. For now.